Okay, I'm going to be demonstrating the proper way to weld two pieces of metal together using just welding rod and jumper cables and batteries. Um, most of this equipment you're already going to have in your vehicle if you're out on the trail. Uh, every vehicle's got a battery, and if you got more than one guy in your party, then obviously you'll have two batteries. Uh, a set of jumper cables, uh, everyone should have a set of those. Uh, a pair of vice grips for holding the welding rod, just because the clamps on jumper cables really don't hold welding rods very good. You need a piece of wire to wire the two batteries in series. You can use a second set of jumper cables for this, but I like to just keep a short length of four gauge battery cable in my toolbox. Uh, you're gonna need a welding helmet. Uh, since I'm in the shop, I've got my auto darkening welding helmet here, but you can just get a cheap Harbor Freight one and throw it in your toolbox. And then of course a fire extinguisher, just because the grass on trails and hot welding sparks don't mix. You definitely don't wanna start a fire, so. Um, and with all this equipment right here, all you got to do is throw in a couple of welding rods and the welding helmet to the gear you already have, and you just added the capability of welding on the trail. Okay, to set this up, you're going to want to disconnect the batteries from both vehicles. You don't want the voltage spikes that go along with welding going through your vehicle's electrical system. Uh, microelectronics and computers definitely don't like that. So, uh, Once you got the batteries disconnected, you need to wire them in series so you can get your 24 volts. So I've got my battery cable here, and all I do is Connect that from the positive terminal of one battery to the negative terminal of the other one. And you definitely want to make sure that your connections are tight because you're going to be passing potentially you know, a couple hundred amps through this and a loose connection will melt down your battery terminals on your battery, possibly damage your battery and the cable, and may start a fire as well. So definitely make sure these connections are tight. Okay, once you get your batteries out of the vehicles and hooked up, uh, you're going to go ahead and hook up your jumper cables. You're going to hook the negative cable up to the negative terminal on one battery, and the positive cable up to the positive terminal on the other battery. Now, on the ends of the jumper cables, you're going to want to take your vice grips and hook it up to the negative terminal, and we're going to use our positive terminal to clamp to our workpiece that we're going to be welding on. Now, this polarity is really important. If you do it the other way around, you're, you're not going to get a good weld at all. You're going to get a bunch of splatter, and uh, you're just not going to get the two pieces of metal to stick together. So, uh, This is called DC electronegative welding. Um, now, using this process is a little bit different from normal stick welding. So even if you're familiar with stick welding, you should probably try this in your shop before you rely on it out on the trail. Because uh, we're using essentially a constant voltage source for welding. The arc is really is a little bit different than what you'd be used to uh, with normal stick welding. So I'm going to go ahead and take my electrode and clamp it here in the vice grips. And just for example, I have a set of brake rotors that's right here. We're going to go ahead and weld these together. Go ahead and ground my workpiece here. And I'll go ahead and lay a couple of practice beads on top of the brake rotors right here. And then I'll go ahead and just lay a couple of short beads on the ends to actually stick the two of them together. I'll go ahead and use a brush to clean this stuff up.
And as you can see, these two pieces are stuck together pretty good now. Okay, and you can see the sample welds I did up here. They're actually pretty clean. I got a little bit of splatter. And then I got my welds right here that are actually holding the two pieces together. I got this one here and this one right here. And they actually came out pretty clean. They're pretty good looking welds. Okay, as you can see, with just the addition of a couple of small pieces of equipment to your toolbox, you can add the ability to weld out on the trail. And that's definitely really handy if you're a long ways away from your shop. So I hope this was useful for everyone.